We are back. Another live podcast. Luke has a ladyfish on. I am reeling in a trout. Big daddy ladyfish. This is a special edition. Nice little trout here on the Slam Shady. So this is a special edition Freedom Boat Club. And no, this is not a sponsored post. I am actually a member of the Freedom Boat Club. And we've had a lot of our other Insider members who are members of Freedom Boat Club and or have boats without a trolling motor. And so this entire, there's a nice little trout. Not going to drop it like it on that one. Thank you guys for all the lovely comments. But one question we get a lot is, hey, Joe, Luke, Tony, Salt Strong. Got a nice boat, part of a boat club. I have no troll motor. How do I go out there and put my family on fish? And that's what we're doing today. So we're in a brand new spot. We're here in beautiful St. Pete. And really, whoa, I got another hit there already. The, the answer is to start off, we are just, we got our boy Will here from Freedom Boat Club driving the boat. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Will used to work with this. And right now we're just trolling. You guys saw the trolling podcast we did. It works. Uh, we've already got multiple fish here right before we cranked up the, the camera. And the goal is to troll a little bit at a really low speed, find where the fish are, and then we have a stick it pin, our little anchor, that we'll uh, put down once we know we're in a good spot. Trying to find a better uh, trout hole. Yep. Yeah, right now we're searching. So in a boat without a troll motor, it Yes, it is a little bit tougher, but you can still go catch a bunch of fish. And oh, I must wait. the the key is, is not to not to really just try to go after snook and redfish. Snook and redfish are usually up near hard structure. Without a troll motor, it's it is more difficult. But it's it's these boats are, are actually really good for doing this type of fishing. Where we're out on, we're just trolling down the edges of these flats. You can probably see back behind us. You know, on, on this side there's dark water. That's that's seagrass. On this side it's green water. That's deeper water. And, uh, and you can just go out and, and right on the edge of the, of the grass, there's going to be a lot of opportunity to catch fish. And you can access it with any boat is the good, is the good thing. So this boat, what, will it probably drafts like a foot and a half or something like that? Yeah, 12 inches. What do you want, is it a 21 foot Mako? Is that is it a 21 Cobia? A Cobia. Yeah. Yeah, and so, and so we're not going to be getting up super skinny for redfish. But we can really easily and comfortably go out and catch these trout. And there'll, there'll probably obviously be some ladyfish. I just had a bump. Um, yeah, probably get probably get some mackerel, and uh, and you can again the good thing is it's just accessible with any type of boat, and you don't have to even have a troll motor to do it effectively. So we're going to troll for a while, find a good spot, and then we have this uh, what's called a a stick pin. And for those watching on video, you can see it, but it's basically a pole that you just shove in the ground. It's just a, a easy way to quietly anchor yourself down, and uh, this is much more effective than the traditional uh, you know traditional anchor that usually has that loud chain and everything attached to it. Cody, if you can look over here so people can see what kind of area we're fishing, you can see the depth change. We're just going right here along this cut. What it, uh, yeah, we'll what, probably circle five around. feet, Luke, and then it goes up to maybe two or three? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's low tide. Yes, this is dead low tide now. And so this is only about maybe a, a foot of water on the flat right now, and which actually makes, makes our job a little bit easier because a lot of the fish that would be up here are now basically forced to be out on the on the deeper zone. And, uh, but with higher tide, it's probably gonna be like two and a half, three feet up there. Oh, dang, I just missed another fish. Yeah, I'm getting some strikes. I'm gonna check my, my slam shady real quick. Make sure you... Yeah, it seems like the outside has been better. And, uh, and yeah, so the outside, so we're basically on the outside channel. If the incoming tide has just started to move in and we're going with the current. We're going with the current straight up the, the edge of the flat. That's the natural way, right? That's the, it's going with the current. That's generally where the fish are looking. And, uh, and we're just gonna be trying to see what we can pick off. Yeah, this is just so easy. If you guys missed the, the trolling one, it's crazy how effective this is. Anybody can do it. You don't even have to really make cast. Just get it out there and let the boat do the rest of the work for you. All you need, we, we got one fourth ounce jig heads. I assume that's what you have on yeah, yours? Yeah, quarter ounce jig that's what head. I have. And a slam shady paddle tail. That's it. Boo bam sham. And still get a bunch of bites. And this is so much fun for the kids too. Let your kids or newbies go out there and just do this. Hold the rod, wait for that bite. And it feels like you got a monster on when they hit because you know you got a couple miles an hour uh, going against the grain. You, know, yeah. you got one? Oh. No, no. So much fun. I think I might have some weeds on it. 
So yeah, what, what was the strike score today? Did you look? I didn't even look. Oh. Well, I think we oh, might you got be. mine. Oh, <laughs> come on. This is the stuff we can't cut out. We're doing this live. I caught a slam shady. Oh. Two for one. BOGO, baby. <laughs> Everyone loves BOGO. Yeah, and so, and, and one thing to be mindful of is if you if you do have, the, just like trolling offshore, if you have one lure out at one distance, another one at a, at a longer distance, when you make a turn, it, it leaves uh, it leaves room for, for one going over the other like that. So, <laughs> try to keep them about the same distance. So, Will, do you guys have any boats with troll motors? Uh, some of our Key West do. They do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The and so, we're here, this is the Tampa, the Tampa Bay location has... Yeah. A billion locations. Yeah, twenty-eight locations. Twenty-eight. Um, Nuts. Five hundred boats now, so we've got a lot to choose from. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's cool. I, I, I signed up just because where we live in Winter Haven, we're on the Channel Lakes, which is an amazing place to boat. But if you don't actually live on the lake, it can be really, really tough. And we live, we share a dock with our neighborhood, but not on the lake. And part of the rule is you can't leave the boat there overnight. So we're looking to buy a boat. And we're like, man, like. It's just going to be so much more hassle to have to store it. Even the storage in Winter Haven, which is not the most expensive place in the world to live, was, I believe, $180, $200 a month just for storing it. And I was like, all right, this is a complete no-brainer. So we joined. Now we get reciprocals. And it's four reciprocals in every location? Yeah, four per year in every location. So if you're a member of Winter Haven, you can come to Tampa Bay or Bradenton and use it four times at every location per year. So you can use it nationwide. So if there's 800 locations, is that right? Four per each. Yep. So That's I. Pretty cool. It'd be impossible for me to. Exactly. To use them all. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I just spent an hour at every one and just did it every day, 365 days a year. Yeah. Great for people who travel. Yeah, it's pretty a uh, pretty cool deal. Oh, you got one, Luke? Oh, nope. No. No, I'm making a cast. I see a nice pothole over here, so I'm gonna make a cast. We're getting we're getting closer to the edge, um, and so we're gonna about take a take a hard turn left, and this is where the best bite should be. Right oh, on the outside yeah, edge of this bay. I'm going to reel mine in too. All right. And so if we get one, this might be a spot where we actually do some drifting as well. So that's going to be my next question. So we've got trolling. We've got drifting. Although, of course, the one day we go out with no troll mother, there's zero wind. Yeah. And then there's just putting the anchor down when you're in a honey hole, right? Exactly. Yeah. The, typically, I'd be I'd be drift fishing this type of stuff, um, but there's just hardly any wind, so we drifting is is not going to be a way to actually cover ground. The only the best way to cover ground on a on a day like this when it's calm is is just to troll. And uh, and again, something that I never even like considered for for many years until recently, and it's it, it's actually surprisingly effective. Yeah. Uh, boat so or just, kayak. Yeah, it just helps. You can cover a ton of ground. Just had a nice strike. And you can catch a surprisingly large amount of fish. And so right now, yeah, we're just basically prospecting by, uh, by doing trolling. And obviously while we're trolling, this water's pretty clear, so I'm looking in the, looking in the water, looking for signs of, uh, of fish spooking off or, or fish themselves. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of slowly get dialed in on, on where these fish are holding, hopefully in time for a lot of fish catching this podcast. I have fished this bank once before, but this was like three years ago. Um, yeah, so there should there should be some fish. It has the right the right makeup for uh, for having a good amount of fish in it. Yeah, I've had a few strikes here. So Luke's we'll, Luke's just getting off a big first place in tournament. Yeah, baby, we got a whole separate podcast on that. Yeah, that was oop, that was the exact opposite weather. <laughs> what you got, dude? That was a, I got something. This might be a trout. Hadn't come up yet. Whoop. I'm on two. Oh, just missed him. Yeah, it looks like oh. a little trout. Here we go. You check your drag. Yeah, seriously. Oh. All right, quick release. So there's a little trout area. Uh, I'm on two. Oh, it's like you have a jack. Yeah, there we go. Like maybe a bluefish or a jack. It's going to be third species here. It's like a flat. You see that, Cody? Oh. Ooh, I just missed a fish. Yeah, or, that area where we just passed is uh, What is that? That was a little blue fish. Look at that, whole blue. Yeah, right on the outside. As soon as we got back on the outside, we started getting uh, started getting some hookups. Hold is, on, buddy. That's gonna be the trend. So really, if we want to catch a bunch of fish, we just troll up and down the outside here. Yep. 
we got both sides of the channel to work to. Yeah, yeah, we've got a lot of territory to cover. There we go. Got blood on my hand, so it's official. I'm a real fisherman. Yeah, this is, uh, again, this leaves the door open for a lot of different types of species. Oh, oh man, I just got hammered. Might be a little school of bluefish back there, huh? Um, yeah, again, the trout, ladyfish are probably the most common, but then you can get some blues. Get another cast back there where I just got hit. You can get some blues, we get some Spanish mackerel, and then even like cobia too during some, during some times. Yeah, well, I think you need to bump out just a hair. Oh yeah, honey hole, baby. Um, I sped up a little bit that last time, and that's when we got yeah. hooked up. Might have helped. Ooh. Oh, way to go, spooking everything. So Luke, when, when, uh, when would be the good time to stop trolling and go back to a, a spot like that? I think if we, if we doubled up, if we see some better fish, and if we go for a while and it slows down, I generally don't like to just reverse right over a spot like right immediately after after fishing it. Um, but you know, if we go down to fish this bank for a while and there's another bank on that side we can do. And uh, you know, we we'll just kind of go back to the spots that, that actually produce the best. Or if we just doubled up on big fish, then we would actually stop immediately. Yeah. And you had a trout on that last one? Yeah, mine was a little trout. Oh, I'm getting some more bite. Ah! Yeah, popped yeah off. we'll head, head out just a little bit deeper. We're going to try, right now we're a little bit over the grass. We're going to try to get right on the edge. And it seems like the trout have been actually off the grass entirely the last couple that I've had. So it's kind of do like a zigzag pattern, like on the grass, off the grass. Obviously, if you're on the grass, make sure that it's deep enough. You know, this is, this is deep. We're on the outside, the deep edge of the grass. Plenty of room. Yeah, big ray right there. So the motor, make sure when you are doing this is that you have the motor up and that you're not hitting the ground. Your wheels, obviously, he's looking at the depth, he's tracking, he's making sure that the prop is not hitting the grass. We have to, we really have to protect these, uh, this grass. It takes a long time to grow and uh, really, really bad to let the motor get down in the, in the grass. So when you are doing this again, stay on the outside and just make, just make sure to be keeping a, a watchful eye on the depth to make sure that, uh, that it, plenty deep enough to you know another over. question that has come up quite a bit from boaters who have a boat like this without a troll motor and i've seen in the community in our insider club a few times is they're saying hey saved up the money i can buy one of two things troll motor or power pole what's the answer oh, troll motor no. all day long yeah. baby yeah because you know the power poles are nice but uh i mean the power pole Power pole is great if you know if you know exactly where the fish are and you can anchor quietly. That's it is really nice, but it's just it's more of an advantage to have the trolling motor that lets you move around quietly. That's that really helps you find fish uh, more effectively, and uh, and it is just yeah. If it was between one of the two, get a trolling motor, and then spend about seventy bucks on one of these, which <laughs> is the which is the stick pin. It's basically the same thing as a power pole, just not electric. Well, look at that big old stingray right there. Big daddy stingray. Um, so yeah, trolling motor is great. Again, you can move around, you can move around quietly. And then to stop quietly, you can just do, use this, and it's just the manual way, right? You just stick it in the ground. And if we do, if we do find a spot with a lot of fish, we'll, uh, we'll use it and show you how it works. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. It's a stick, you put it in the ground, and it has a surprisingly good hold. It'll hold for, uh, for a really long time. All right, come on, baby. We gotta find us a good spot so we can show all the techniques. Yep. Yeah, this area. And so as far as conditions, these these conditions we have now are my least favorite of all. You know, we have ah, got another hit there. We have no wind, so there's like no disturbance on the water. The fish are gonna be the the spookiest uh, in days like this where there's just no wind and also there's there's like hardly any clouds. And so no wind, cloud uh, cloudless sky is by far my least favorite time to fish. And we're like, I think four days after a full moon and it was clear last night. So the, you know, the, the moon was bright last night, those fish were feeding. So as far as the most difficult Ooh. time to, to go out and catch fish, I, I believe this is it. You want Ah, it? man, I'm oh. getting nailed. Missing my, uh, it's a little deeper back in here. Yeah, we're about to get shallow again. So look, in case we don't get to drift today because of the lack of wind, talk about some, uh, drifting tips 
assuming you're out in the same kind of boat. Yeah, we'll, we'll do some drifting, but uh, the, I mean, the tips obviously is, is know what the wind and the current's doing, what the wind and the tide's doing, and, uh, and just set yourself up so that you're drifting, so that you know, the wind, based on the wind and, and the currents, that you're gonna go in the right area. And then also, you know, obviously when you're drifting, just make sure you're, you're uh, staying in a spot that you can get, or you're in a spot that you can get out of, where you don't wanna drift up too shallow, you're gonna get stuck. And like I said, we have some dolphin feet down there, that's not gonna help our chances. Um, and then it's yeah, really just about just, just paying attention to the drift, knowing which way you're going to be going, know the speed that you're going, and, uh, and just plan accordingly. So right now, you know, if we do drift, we have the wind coming one way and the current going the other, so we would really not be drifting very fast at all. I have to guess that the wind would be overcoming the, the current. Both are kind of weak though. So we would have to just really shut down and kind of see what happens. I think we have a nice little deep point over there. Hey, casting over, nah. man, huh? I casting see. over, Joe. Got prison rules here, Cody. <laughs> get your shank ready, dude. It's hoping to get a hookup right there. Playing around. Yeah, because a lot of these underwater points, they hold a lot of fish. So I saw one, I had to make a, had to make a run at it. And I got to get up over Joe's line. Whoop. So what's, uh, what's been the trends here lately, dude? Whoa. You've been going out quite a bit. Yeah, I've mostly been going after snook and reds and I've been fishing a lot of docks. Like in the tournament day, it was, it was really bad weather. The wind was cranking and uh, the, wind, the wind was so strong. It was coming from uh, the, north, the northeast. So that was basically blowing a lot of the water out. So the, everything was really low and I was just fishing deep docks and that's where all the fish were. We actually had a really good day. Caught a bunch of fish. And, uh, but again, doing that, I had a trolling motor, like it was, it was real, it was pretty, it was more technical where I had a trolling motor and having to navigate the wind and everything with the trolling motor. Trolling motor was, was clutch that day. I do have a, uh, a power pole in my boat and didn't, didn't use it once the entire day because it was, it was really just hundred percent trolling motor and, and uh, moving, moving around, covering ground. And, uh, and yeah, it ended up being a great day. But again, I would prefer, even though it was after cold front, the winds were like 15 to 20 miles an hour. I would prefer that over this where it's a little bit warmer, but it's just calm, calm winds, clear skies is by far my least favorite. It's the nicest time to be out on the water, <laughs> weather-wise. And it was the times I used to always want to, oh man, like, I hope the weekend's gonna be like just really nice like this. But as far as catching fish, it's, it's actually, uh, it's tough. And it's been a really, I think almost seems like the whole South has had a really windy year so far in yep. 2020, but dude, we've killed it this year in terms of fish catching. Oh, absolutely. You know, when prior times we'd have been like, ah, I don't even want to go out there in this mess. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, this area is looking kind of dead. I think we should, we should either reverse around or even pick up and go. Right. We've never had to move spots on a podcast, do we? I don't know what the rules are. Oh, we, we got to stay going, man. It's live, baby. All right. I got yeah. a little got some grass up ahead of us. I'll right, we'll do, uh, it, it goes out to a point off to the right. Let's just go down that point. See that about hundred yards up? Yep. And if we get something, we'll keep going. If not, we'll bail. Yeah, we so got I'm, I'm not seeing shot. any, there's not any birds. There's like no water turkeys out here. It just doesn't look a couple really birds good. way up there by that. Uh, that might be everybody, uh, Tyler. Yeah, that's, that's Tyler. Let's say hi to him. I'm sure he doesn't want us buzzing his flat. <laughs> I'm sure he'd love to see us right next to him and his customers. <laughs> you listen to this, Captain Tyler Capella. We, uh, man, we had a good time with him the other week, didn't we? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So we had two friends in town yeah, hang, from hang Arizona right 50 feet. who love fishing, but more freshwater guys. And they wanted to catch some snook and reds. And just the same reason we have Will here, it's easier to do content and or entertain when you're not having to drive the boat and, and do everything else. So we chartered old Captain Tyler Capella for the day. And that dude put us on some fish. I mean, right off the bat, tons of trout. And then we're like, all right, let's go for the slam. Next thing you know, our boy, uh, what John caught that really nice snook. James, really nice red. You got a really nice red. Yep. Man, that was a fun day. Yeah, well, see that slick out there? Yep. Let's go buzz that. No, uh, wait, no out, way out of the right, hard right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we got a nice little grass, a uh, little peninsula shooting out. And what we were using for that, guys, too, just another 
fun way to go out there and catch a lot of fish without having to do too much is we ended up getting a bunch of lady fish earlier on. We were fishing them flat for the trout and Tyler kept them and we cut them up into chunks and just did cut bait sitting there off the off the flat why we were still using yeah, our we'll slave shady paddle tails all the way out and way. those bigger fish that day all were all caught on that cut bait anybody can do it oh i got a nice there we are oh i lost them oh it was right over that as soon as we went to that grass flat oh that was a better fish too they're always Dang. better when they get off right no i mean it was <laughs> First legitimate feeling fish. Oh, those bluefish always fight fun. Go back out that way. Yeah, we got a big grass peninsula kind of jutting out here. Let's see if we can get something off of it. Yeah, as soon as my lure went over, I don't know if Cody, if you can see that. Yeah, we'll kind of go right on the tip of it. I'm gonna be going right alongside of it, hoping to find some hungry predators. See if it works again. And you guys notice too, if you're watching, occasionally we'll kind of take the rod tip up to kind of let it drop down again. A lot of times you get the strike right there on that drop, letting the paddle tail give a little bit more action and vibration. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. So we're gonna hit this one too or no? Or just keep going? Might as well. There's a few in here. Yeah, let's keep going over them. That was right when I got that strike. Yeah, I just, had to, I just had to hit when my bait got over that last one. Oh, they're out here, baby. Yeah, nothing, uh, definitely, we just haven't found the quantity enough to sit there and stop. Or the size. I think what we can do is we, we go back around, there's, there's some uh, kind of little uh, deep little pockets, and we can drift over some of those pockets and, and uh, probably get, pick out a decent amount of fish. Got a good one here. All right, let's do it, baby. Get ready for the strike. Yeah, with these bay boats, you know, again, you can't get as, as skinny as uh, like what my skiff does. But for this type of fishing, it, it is it is just as good, if not better. You have a ton of room, get a lot of people out, and when you do find a good area, you can just sit there and, and drift and have you know four or five people fishing. And, uh, and just with a simple, simple lure, you can go out and catch a ton of fish. Yeah, I will say the room is nice. Say what? The, having this oh, much yeah. room versus oh, yeah. being on yeah. Luke's Maverick. When Luke and I and Cody are on there, it's, uh, it's kind of tight quarters. Yeah, this is way easier. What, what size boats do you guys have? How, how big does it get? We have 17 foot skips. We have 21 bay boats split between cobias and sea foxes and then we have uh, big 22 and 23 foot offshore center consoles and cool very cool so that was yeah 17 to 23 in case y'all yeah. couldn't hear them um be a lot of options uh, and yeah here there's actually a flat yeah we did we missed this there's a flat out to the left maybe we should buzz that will i think we we were more inland there let's yeah, go let's buzz that and uh see how it goes we don't get anything there, we can end it. Worst case, we do part two, where we actually go drift, you know? Yeah, that's what I think we should do. We're a little bit out of this, out of the zone right now to drift. But we might find them out here. This actually looks pretty yeah, promising. it's looking pretty good. So explain to people listening what we're looking at here. We're getting a little bit closer to the main channel now? Yeah, so we were following the, the edge of the flat and, um, and it basically splintered off. And I didn't even realize it splintered off. It. And so there's a, uh, we were kind of we end up being on it on a more interior flat we weren't on the the hard edge to the deepest channel and now we're going out to that outer zone and uh and that's probably where the majority of the fish will be yeah, but we'll never know until you go so yeah, we'll give it a shot here the other the bad news though is that we have a lot of floating grass out here so i'm currently yeah i had some grass tied up with floaters and that's the reason why the paddle tails are are really my my new favorite for for trolling because they are you know they are more weedless than like a crankbait which is what i used to troll with but you have that paddle on there so you, that paddle you can feel it vibrating and as long as you have braided line which i highly recommend uh, get some braid line on there and uh and you can feel the paddle you can feel that paddle just sit there vibrating in the water and then, but as soon as you have weeds on it 
then uh, then you know that you have weeds on it, right? You know there's a problem, and you can you can go and go ahead and fix it. If you're not using braided line, come on, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. Even even Captain Jeff Maggio, yeah, well, dog, no, straight uh, straight that line, kind of buzz the points. He used to make fun of guys sporting their braid. What color braid you got? He uses braid. Mono was so 1980, dude. What do we got? A ten pound, ten pound test? Yeah, a ten pound test is plenty. I also even like using the tournaments, fishing docks, we are using ten pound. Yeah, Tony caught that. We haven't posted it yet. I don't know by the time this goes live, it might be posted. Yeah, we'll get a little bit closer in there, like twenty feet in. But that snook that went under the yeah, dock. Yeah, this is the craziest around. catch. Of craziest catch I've ever seen. It was wild, and that was ten pound. Power Pro and then what, like a 20 or 20, 20 pound liter, 20, yeah. man, crazy. You don't need much. And even the, one of the last ones we did with Peter Deeks, I mean, he's fishing super light going after those trophy fish. He always says, get, get the strike first, then worry about getting the fish in. You go out there with your Marlin rod, trying to catch a, a snook, it ain't gonna work. Man, this flat looks good though. Yeah, for many years, you know, we go out and get the 4,000 size reels with, you know, 20 pound or more line. And, and it was just, it was just too much power. It was not needed. And now I, don't, I use no more than 3,000s. I use 10 pound oh. braid for pretty oh. much everything. What a nice hit. And uh, even going, because we did a lot of, I uh, did some, some line contests, some casting contests with different lines uh, last year. And, and just going from a 20 pound braid so I did a 20 pound Power Pro against a 10 pound Power Pro, same rod, same reel, same everything. And the 10 pound braid versus the 20, it was like, it was a little over 20% difference on casting distance, that's huge. And so I'm doing the math, it was every, uh, every around 15 casts, 15 to 20 casts, you can cover an extra football field with the 10 pound line relative to the, to the 20 pound line. So if you're fishing open flats like this, and, uh, and it, where distance, is, where just covering ground is, is really key, Th there's no better way to guarantee you're gonna catch more fish than to go to a lighter braid, because you can, you can literally just get your bait in front of more fish. And not only are you getting more in, in front of more fish, but those fish on the furthest distance of your cast, they're gonna be the most likely to eat because they have less idea that danger's in the area too. Makes so, so much sense. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, right? Normally when we can see our lure, oh, when we can see our lure, no. we're usually not Dang, I missed another one. We're usually just reeling in real quickly. Like most of the strikes are happening furthest away, even times a lot of times on the drop, which is another reason we love these. You got another one? I'm getting nailed, <laughs> but uh, man, they keep popping off. They're not digging so much of the ladyfish just thrashing at it. Yep. Check my lure real quick. Okay, oh, so yeah, I did a, I did pop, another pop uh, me off there. I did another lure test with braid versus mono. And oh, there we are. Oh, that one got off too. I think it's ladyfish, man. Yeah, probably. We got some crab traps down there. But I so I did one with braid versus mono, and uh, uh, when mono is brand new, it actually held up pretty close. It was like maybe the braid went. It was a ten pound braid versus a ten pound mono to keep the strength equal. And the the braid won. It wasn't by as much as I thought, but after just a few uses of mono, it just, the mono builds so much memory, where over time, the casting performance gets much worse. It degrades with mono. So starting out, it's, it's actually surprisingly close, but, but over time, braid just, it significantly outperforms performs mono. So I, I now, I used to use mono exclusively. Now I've totally flip-flopped where I don't use mono as my main line for any of my rods. The time what to use will be with tarpon. That's what Captain Jeff does. Yep. Um, just because you need the stretch obviously braid has no stretch at all mono has a ton of stretch and uh for tarpon fishing that's a big advantage but uh but for most for most fish especially if you're using lures braid is it, it is remarkable how much of a, a an impact it makes i was very slow to make the switch and so if, if you haven't made the switch yet i highly recommend at least giving it a try i'm now kicking myself for uh for waiting as long as i did <laughs> and, uh, and again the test just really helped I knew I actually I knew I liked it better before I did this test, but the test really helped me kind of quantify how much of a difference it is. Oop, dang it, missed the something. Strike. 
Yep. This area looks great. Yeah, so right now, yeah, we're right, we're buzzing right, perfectly right on the outside. But now we're going into the current, so I think, oh, there we are. There we are. Got him. Oh, this, this might be a good trout. You're way out there, huh? Yeah, I had a lot of line out. Huh. Yeah, I believe this is a, this is a good sized trout. But they feel way bigger than they are. <laughs> when trolling, last time, last time I had one pulling out drag, and I was like, oh, it's a good trout, and it was like 10 inches. <laughs> so. I need to be careful if I say it's big, but this one did. Uh, this one definitely does feel bigger than the one earlier. We'll yeah, it's, it's definitely here. bigger. Not huge, but it's a solid maybe 17, 17 inch or so. All right, I just had a strike too, so this could be a good area, Luke, for us to come back to either and either drift or put the Possibly, anchor pin yep. down. Nice little nice trout, slam shady. Cool. Well, guys, let's let's uh, let's end it. We're gonna end this one since the promise is to always be continuous, and we ended on a good note, right there. Yeah, it was fun. A couple of trout, blue, yeah. and caught some action on a, on a really tough day. Thirty um, minutes. This cold or clear and calm, or in my opinion, the the toughest times to go out and catch fish. We still made it happen, and um, and yeah, we'll try to catch some more after the camera camera shuts down and see what else we can get into today. Yep. And then finally, if you're still here, join us in the Insider Club if you haven't already. Luke is uh, every week now. Oh, there, there's one. Why we're closing? Go, I'm going. <laughs> That's pretty what funny. That? Ladyfish. Big old lady. Um, Luke is now every Friday doing a little 10 minute video. So we say in 10 minutes or less, shows you where to fish, right? I mean, from Texas to all over Florida. Yeah, I mean, we just cover, because now we have over 12,000 members and, uh, and we get about and we build a platform for the members to, to post their reports. And so we get about maybe 30, 30 to 40 a day now. And so I, I obviously go through all those. And, um, and, and then I give, and obviously I'm fishing as well, and we kind of go through to see what the recent trends are. And then look at the weather coming up, right, for the entire Southeast. We can really go through the entire platform just to give the overall game plan to use. And uh, so in that tournament day that we just won, um, it, we literally just used the exact game plan that was described the day before. And it's funny and, uh, how many work. of our members are, you know, they're busy with life and jobs, kids, and they just just watch that 10 minute video and then go out and fish and like, holy smokes, yeah. it works. So if you're into saving time, into saving money, tonight we're actually having a, a meeting with a, a large group to get a whole lot more discounts for you guys. And uh, so if you're into saving time and money, oh, there's another one, oh, small guy. And, and just meet new friends too. I mean, I think a big part of it, uh, even Will, uh, you know, used to work for us, one of our members. And I mean, you got some great friends that you still talk to all the time and fish with. Oh, yeah. That all happened because of the uh, insight. Man, we should have just stayed here. Yeah, so now, yeah now, now we're doing the drifting that we said we weren't going to do. <laughs> so Luke's Louise, on. We Danny got another. Trevino, yeah, Bill and Danny. Gene, old Tom Ray. James. Joe Tom. Sweet yeah. baby Jean. Uh, Jean. Um, so yeah, yeah, if you guys want to meet friends, save money, same time, join us in the Insider Club. It comes with an unheard of 365 day, 100% money back guarantee. So either you're saving money, catching more fish, meeting friends, or you don't pay. Yeah, don't you wish that. every company nice did trout. Good job, Lukey. Slam Shady. And of course, if you haven't picked up your Slam Shady, go to slamshady.com. Give them one free pack to every angler who wants them. But if you're not into catching fish, don't get them. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> so, guys, thank you so much for all the love, all the support. We will see you on the next oh. pot catch. Oh, just oh, missed another one. Oh, man. Yeah, they're here. So, yeah, yeah when you do the find a spot <laughs> drifting like this, is you can catch way more fish. Yeah, you're lucky if you stuck around to the very end. Yeah, okay. So, so we're so right here. Cody, so you want to so. kind of just show the area real quick to end it. People stuck around in the end, they get to see kind of where. Oh, there's another one. I mean, they're in here thick. And hopefully you can see the, the 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 flat where you got grass. It kind of it's kind of pot, and those big white potholes. I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not. But uh, yeah, we're gonna stay here and uh, catch some uh, some more trout, and then hopefully uh, do another little video too where we uh, try to catch some bigger fish. So we out. Peace. Thanks, guys. See ya.
Hey there, it's Joe Simons, one of the co-founders here at Salt Strong, and have you claimed your free pack of these irresistible Slam Shady Paddle Tail Lures? We designed this lure with over 12,000 serious inshore anglers, including many full-time guides, to go out there and catch more redfish, more speckled trout, more snook, more flounder, more inshore saltwater slams. And if you want a free pack to try out a sample yourself, click down below right now. We have one free pack per angler while supplies last. Click down below right now.